Uh, well, uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this uh, webinar. Um, it looks like uh, I've got Sage on the other line here telling me that the volume's all right. So uh, I do welcome you, those of you in the uh, Southern Hemisphere, the lands down under. Uh, good morning on this uh, rainy, uh, slightly miserable day. Uh, most of the east coast of Australia has been catching a good sort of uh, drink, which uh, we badly need. Uh, and uh, uh, we're certainly getting it now. Uh, so uh, welcome, folks. Um, it's Friday evening uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, Saturday morning uh, down under, and uh, we've got a whole lot of stuff to talk to you about today, some very important stuff. Um, uh, first of all, the uh, chart that you're seeing now is one of our uh, Frag Zen text uh, charts. For those of you who are not familiar with this, this is a short-term trading system um, where we... Uh, create signals based on uh, momentum uh, indicators uh, and we send them to you uh, by text straight to your cell phone so the signals just arrive um, and you trade them accordingly. Uh, this uh, chart that you're seeing is a uh, new one that uh, Sage has sent me. She's the lady that uh, keeps all the charts uh, and results for Frank Zen uh, together with um, her husband uh, Mustang who many of you know. Um, and uh, we often show you a few of these uh, charts at the beginning here. Um, <laughs> Haley, hi Haley. I know you need the rain in California. It's a shocker what's going on over there. Uh, folks, um, uh, I, I have a couple of inter interesting questions. Uh, two from uh, different Brian's, Brian, Brian uh, uh, Coleman and uh, Brian Sullivan. Also another one from Sage, and I always deal with your questions at the end of the webinar, so uh, if there are any particular things you'd like me to address specifically, please just type them into the questions box, uh, which is at the bottom of your, towards the bottom of your um, uh, go-to-webinar um, panel uh, that you'll see there, and I will uh, certainly deal with them uh, as we progress. Okay, so uh, let's uh, progress here. We have a lot to do. Um, uh, here's another chart. This is uh, another one of these Frank Zen text trades. Here's a nice easy $2,500 um, in a Forex trade. Um, and you'll see there's a note there in red from Sage saying hot, hot off our new auto trade leader follow-up. Um, what we try to do is provide products that you want and that are convenient for you. And uh, whilst we have um, a lot of people trading the tech signals uh, on their own, uh, we've equally had a lot of people who've said, look, these things come 24-5 uh, and uh, I can't stay up all night uh, waiting for them um, and um, uh, I need something more convenient. So we've got a number of new products coming out next month, uh, which is uh, only uh, 10 days or so away now, in fact, uh, seven or eight. Um, and uh, one of them is this uh, auto trade leader follow-up uh, program. Um, and how that works is that... Uh, there's a master uh, account uh, that takes these uh, text signals uh, and it, uh, whatever happens in there um, is um, uh, replicated in your account. Um, and uh, we want to thank Terry, um, our um, uh, webmaster and techie guy, uh, who's been developing this program now. It's not ready for release yet. There's a couple of glitches in it. Uh, one on our end, which we're dealing with, and one at the end of the uh, uh, the uh, server that uh, runs this leader follower thing. Uh, but it will be ready for release in the next few weeks. Uh, we also have, uh, David, your question, product for Trade Navigator. Yes, how did you know? Uh, we're very excited, and uh, let me come to that in... Uh, might be a convenient time now while we're talking about it, but in any event, uh, let's move on. Here's the next chart. This is S&P, same thing. This is the Frac 10 text uh, program. You see I'm emphasizing text because we're uh, getting close to releasing a program uh, called Frac Zen Pro, uh, which as uh, David perhaps uh, knows about or has uh, uh, foresight into um, is a uh, completely radical and new product. Um, and it's called Frac Zen. It runs on the same, similar Frac Zen um, uh, methodology, uh, but um, it creates signals entirely different uh, to the Frac Zen text program. We call it Frac Zen Pro, 
I'm going to give you a sneak preview of some of that uh, in about uh, 60 seconds. Uh, but uh, whereas for, frankly in text you can either have the signals delivered straight to your cell phone uh, or in a week or 10 days, hopefully no more, you're going to be able to uh, um, look at this um, leader follow-up uh, program that's running uh, at the moment with a couple of glitches in it and uh, you'll be able to link your account. Uh, to the master account, whatever trades the master account takes uh, will be just uh, copied uh, straight over into your um, account. Um, so let's, uh, you've seen enough of that, here's our welcome page uh, and what I want to show you just very briefly uh, is um, a, let me bring this over so you can see it. You should now, the screen will change in a second or two. Um, here is a um, uh, spreadsheet uh, of the new program I'm going to tease you with. Um, I'm, we're actually going to either be releasing this or certainly talking about releasing it. Uh, you know, there's always a problem uh, having anything too firm with technology because it takes time and uh, it has, uh, you know, it's glitches and, and, and problems and we're still working on this, but this is Fraxen Pro, which still works on the Fraxen methodology, but it creates entirely different signals to Fraxen text. Um, and this is going to run in a new Trade Navigator program called Trade Clone, uh, which hasn't been released yet, which I think will be the first product to run in Trade Clone. Um, and uh, what it does, it runs on your Trade Navigator program uh, and um, it will create uh, these signals inside your own Trade Navigator program um, and it will then manage the stops, the reversals and everything else. Now, uh, what you're looking at is a spreadsheet uh, <coughs> created by uh, the uh, Fraxen Pro in Trade Clone. It's created by <coughs> excuse me, computers. Um, and these are the 15 markets that uh, we're uh, this stage going to be releasing. Um, and uh, these are the results from the beginning of the year to date. Um, and it's pretty interesting. Um, you can see that uh, this program, uh, let me find my highlighter so that I can indicate some stuff to you here. Um, uh, you can see in this uh, win percent here, uh, that this program doesn't have a very good win percent rate uh, and normally we'd like to see this up in the 60-70 percent but um, <clears throat> there's a story uh, that really promoted me to uh, develop Fraxen uh, and it's to do with the uh, new um, uh, US aircraft, the uh, Strike Fighter um, which Australia is getting um, a couple of squadrons of. Uh, it's still in development in the US, has been for years and years. Um, and it's going to just be the most phenomenal uh, combat aircraft the world's ever seen. Uh, but the thing that caught my eye is that uh, in a designer's conference uh, some years ago, now maybe five or six years ago, uh, the key to designing it is that it is inherently unstable. It's flight design until now. Uh, the wish of, uh, of designers of aircraft has always been to design something highly stable. Uh, but the breakthrough that they found with the J-35 strike fighter uh, was that if they made the design uh, inherently unstable, uh, it could perform um, amazing manoeuvres that, uh, that a more conventional aircraft could not. Um, and it's that very instability uh, that makes it such an amazing performer. Um, and I saw some of that coming through in Frack Zen uh, some years ago, so I continued to pursue it. And as you can see, the traditional measure of win percent doesn't really have much to do uh, with what we're interested in, which is uh, this column over here, uh, net profit. Um, and you can see that with a fairly unstable model of, with low percentages, um, the average wins are so much bigger um, uh, than the average loss, that we get these sensational figures uh, out of these markets. Um, and uh, if you just look at this column here, M, the return percent, um, you can see that almost all of these uh, returns are quite staggering. Now, um, some of them are not. Um, and interestingly enough, um, gold, um, as I've often told you, is not um, a great trading market, but I know you guys love it. Um, in the same way the S&P is not a great trading market and we don't even cover that um, in this version of Fraxen. Uh, 
uh, because it's not worth covering for you folks but I, we're probably going to put uh, gold uh, and the S&P in here anyway it'll be your choice which markets you uh, want to trade uh, but the further away you get uh, from the standard markets the better the returns are which is kind of interesting um, if you look at uh, just run down these symbols some of them will be unfamiliar to you uh, for example um, HE um, is hogs, lean hogs, used to be called pork bellies, wonderful trading market uh, that um, uh, is fairly uh, pretty wild. Um, I remember the time this market was uh, limit down 23 days, um, but I think those days are probably gone now. It's a much more organized market. LEs, another one you won't be familiar with, um, and that's live cattle. Um, and the further away you get, uh, here's uh, natural gas. Uh, 380 odd percent um, GXNO is the, the DAX uh, GF um, uh, that's feeder cattle so the further away you get from traditional markets that are, are, are well known uh, and traded by you know retail traders the ones that are less well known and mainly traded by professionals and merchants that is their um, uh, their um, uh, they're sort of the ones that the retail traders don't know about. So, yes, Haley, what are the standard markets? Well, you know, everyone wants to trade the S&P, bonds, um, and gold. Uh, they're the ones they know. You look at uh, these ones, soybeans, Russell, sugar, gasoline, uh, NASDAQ, um, natural gas, um, hogs, coffee, heating oil, um, some fairly um, exotic uh, markets there. Um, but they're, they're markets that are largely traded by merchants who are requiring these products uh, for their production and the other side of the trade of course is the producers, uh, the farmers or the um, uh, oil companies, the exploration companies uh, and we find that the trading in those markets is far more rational and, and you can understand why. Anyway, I'm not going to tell you any more about that because I have a, um, I have a uh, webinar um, schedule which I'll be doing uh, with Pete Kilman. It'll be a joint trade navigator. Um, be a joint trade navigator. Uh, Daniel Code webinar, um, and um, that is on the third of September, folks. So write that down. That'll be important. Uh, we'll be showing you how uh, Franklin Pro works in Trade Clone, uh, which is this new trade navigator program. So. Uh, thanks for that uh, question, David. I don't know how you knew about it, but obviously you had some idea. All right, so moving on, folks, we've got an awful lot to uh, uh, show you today. And the things I want to show you today, we wanted to talk about fakes and failures. Uh, and I want to get you to open your shoulders a bit on your trading and open your minds to the possibilities um, that the Daniel Code offers. Um, I suspect that uh, if you're trading, and, and let me make this distinction, the Daniel Code TO3 and PLUS signals are optimized for safety. Um, that is, they're optimized uh, for you to start trading them just as it's set out in the uh, trade program with the rules there, which I'm going to get to in a while. Um, uh, and it's designed to keep you in the market for, for reasonably short periods and to keep it simple uh, for people who are new to trading. <coughs> once you've got, remember, all of these signals are simply suggestions, but once you've got uh, comfortable with your uh, TO3 and PLUS signals, um, then you can open your shoulders a bit. And I want to show you today uh, the rewards that these programs make available. <coughs> I suspect that uh, you could be making 10 or 20 times uh, what you're getting out of your trading uh, with a bit of this knowledge, which I simply call tradecraft. Uh, and uh, there's nothing new here. I've talked to you about this before. Uh, one of the things we do at these webinars is we keep covering these same basic things again and again, uh, but today I'm going to show you uh, some extensions of that. Uh, so um, here's a uh, chart that we're looking at now, um, and this fella is copper. Um, and uh, I wanted to show you a sequence here uh, that all of this stuff, I'm going to show you how to make a whole lot more money than you're making. Um, so here was uh, the blue line, Daniel Code blue line buy signal right at this bar here. It was elected, um, and next day, look, the market went down. Um, I suggest that probably a lot of you who took that signal uh, bailed out somewhere, uh, or you might have uh, you might have even had your stop uh, underneath this bar on the next day, which is not correct. Your stop should have been underneath this bar. 
uh, and left there until, because this is a, a blue line trade, um, the standard way was to exit first profitable close. But what I'm showing you is, um, look where the stochastic is. This is a blue line trade. These are the ones I've been saying to you for weeks and weeks uh, that you can follow with a trailing stop. Um, and it's really simple uh, what we recommend. This is the fast stochastic, the Daniel Code stochastic. Uh, you can get these stochastics and all of these uh, indicators um, uh, with the Daniel Code library in Trade Navigator. Uh, all members are entitled to have that free. So if you haven't got it already, um, let Terry know. Uh, talking about Terry, it's most remiss of me uh, not to congratulate uh, Terry and Lindsay uh, on the birth last night of their third son. Uh, so Terry, I don't think he's with us today. Uh, he's obviously got uh, more important matters to attend to. His, uh, his new baby was born at about half past three uh, in the morning, uh, US Eastern Time. So um, Terry, I don't think you're with us, but you have our heartfelt congratulations. Three, three sons, uh, all under the age of four. You'll have your hands uh, even more full now than before. Uh, but going back to this uh, concept of trailing your stops, um, and staying in these trades longer, uh, very simply you use a two bar trailing stop. That is the stop is below the lowest low of the last two completed bars. Um, so here was a plus buy signal. Uh, if you didn't subscribe to the plus signals, you probably do. You didn't get this. And interestingly, um, on a percentage basis, not a lot of you get the plus signals. You uh, uh, guys who've been with us a long time, you get the TO3 signals, but not a lot of you have upgraded the plus signals, and I suggest to you that uh, you're missing out on a whole lot. The plus signals are probably three times as often as the TO3 signals, and as I'm showing you today, they are seriously fantastic. So um, here was your blue line bar. Then you got this down bar. Now, uh, if you look at this, you see this up one, down two. Now, to my mind, that's the only part of the Elliott wave that's ever worked. Uh, or <laughs> Or oh, it's the only part of it that I've ever seen that works. So um, let me just leave it like that. Uh, but that was enough to put most of you off the off the trade. I suggest a lot of you got out of the trade. Here was the plus buy signal. Look at it, whoosh, um, and off it went. Now, if you're trailing your stop, these of you who are more confident in your trading, uh, let me say again so it's clear: don't do this when you start your trading. Uh, just stick to the rules that that are set down. Uh, for the defensive uh, type of trading that this stuff uh, set up for for you folks. Uh, but when you feel a bit more confident, I want to show you today what happens once you start trailing your stops and what happens when you understand trade craft. Um, so your stop is below <coughs> the lowest low uh, of the last two completed bars. Um, and when the stochastic moves up and the blue line, which is percent %K, gets overbought, Excuse me. You then go to a one-bar trailing stop. So here's this nice little trade: two thousand and sixty-two dollars per one contract. Um, it, it's quite extraordinary. And uh, those of you who are interested in the um, accuracy and uh, the prescience of these Daniel Code uh, price signals, look at this. Straight up to this double red line here. Uh, went through it. Pulled back. Next day it took off. Found the blue line. Went slightly through it. Where did it close? Right on this red line. Uh, it's remarkable um, just how accurate these um, uh, Daniel Code price levels are. I'm going to have more to say about that uh, shortly. So uh, that was a surprise one. And here's the next uh, slide coming up. We're going to uh, have about nine more of these. Then we're going to take the charts and talk about all those other issues like uh, where a market going to, etc. So uh, stick with us. Um, here is the same thing, and this slide is headed, can you trail? Um, here's a simple buy signal. Uh, this is AP. That's the uh, Australian Share Price Index. Uh, a lot of you will call it XOJ, which is the uh, Australian Stock Exchange designation for it. AP is the futures contract uh, of the same market. So here was a simple plus buy signal. It was a nice enough signal. Uh, the standard move is to exit. Um, uh, first profitable uh, close, which is uh, on that bar that gave you the entry. Nice bit of money. Uh, but look what happened if you trail. Now, this is an absolute um, 
uh, it's almost, uh, let me try to explain to you, a standard blue line signal that didn't have the technical requirements to be a, be a blue line signal. So uh, what we had on this market <coughs> by the time this uh, bar on which I have the highlighter was finished uh, is you had <coughs> pretty precise target recognition. Uh, 5346 was the Daniel Code blue line. The market reversed at that blue line uh, and it couldn't be a blue line signal per se because uh, for the blue line signals, uh, we don't want them to have reversed already. Uh, that's just the uh, way they're defined. But this is, uh, in reality, it's a form of a blue line signal and it's got all the requirements you need for a blue line setup. First of all, price recognition of Daniel Code blue line, certainly have that. Uh, market opened in here, ran down, find the blue line and made a snapback reversal. Here's our fast stochastic, it's definitely oversold. Here's our slow stochastic, it's definitely oversold. Um, and here is our CCI, our proprietary momentum indicator. The market made a new low right here where the uh, highlighter is, uh, but the CCI did not. And that's divergence, uh, which is the uh, fourth requirement we require to set up a blue line signal. So this would have been a blue line signal if the close had been lower than the open, but it had already turned, uh, which means that it could not be technically a blue line signal, but uh, in substance, it was a blue line signal. This is just a variation of a blue line signal. Uh, and it came out as a plus signal, and there was your buy right there. Uh, so one bar up, exit first, profitable close. Very nice, thank you. Consider what happened if you'd used a trailing stop. Uh, those of you people who've been trading a bit longer, more comfortable with your trading, look at this trailing stop. Same thing. Uh, the uh, stochastic is not overbought, uh, so you're on a two-bar trail all the way up here doesn't make any difference in this particular market because it just kept going up uh, and once it gets overbought that's right in here so it's fairly early uh, you go from a two bar trailing stop to a one bar trailing stop which means your stop goes uh, below the low of the last completed bar uh, so you're following this up with your trailing stop your risk is reducing all the time and have a look at this uh, 4,000 you're now to a one bar you're now to a one bar stop this was Thursday's bar uh, Friday's bar, I think, was an inside bar today. Um, but look at this, $4,650 uh, on a simple uh, trade um, on this um, uh, Australian market. Uh, let's go on. Let's talk now about failed trades. I promise you I was going to show you how to profit uh, from fakes and failures. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is uh, one of them. This is DX. Uh, this is the US dollar index. So. Uh, here was our TO3 sell signal on this bar. Um, it dived down. It was elected, uh, but uh, you didn't get the first profitable close. Um, now, TO3s, this, this might sound confusing to you, so I'll try to keep it simple. All TO3 signals are classified in our trade management program uh, as R, R for Robert, R for reversal signals. And <coughs> for those, once the... Uh, market reaches the first target, uh, there's a set protocol that you move your stop loss, take off half position, move your stop loss to break even. Now, uh, this I don't think ever reached the first target, so you're probably locked into it uh, and it's going to be a losing trade. But um, as I've been telling you for at least the last three webinars, any TO3 or Daniel Code signal is automatically followed by a reversal um, and there's a very strong reason for that. Um, if the market is trending, and sometimes it's not clear to see if it's trending, <clears throat> this market here certainly doesn't appear to be trending. It appears to be a consolidation. Uh, but uh, if it wasn't, if this was uh, a trending market, the proof is that it will only correct one to three bars, not counting inside bars. Uh, and that's the definition of a trending market. And here we can't even see that it's trending. If you ask me what all this price is, I'd say it's a consolidation. But if we stick to our procedures, we have a TO3 sell, which means the next day we have an automatic buy. And, and the next day we had an inside bar, so no trade was elected. Uh, but the following day uh, we bought right here. That is, we bought at the high of the last bar that was not itself an inside bar. Um, and that's the Daniel Code rule on trading inside bars. Now, that one is not hard and fast. Um, I can tell you that uh, a lot of our traders uh, will actually trade the highs and lows 
uh, of inside bars um, and uh, you know they have to get in earlier and sometimes uh, you'll find that uh, the bar for the inside bar is so big uh, that if you want any real possibility of a trade you have to do that uh, but uh, I tell you statistically uh, that is actually a net uh, negative losing proposition but anyway uh, this is the point I've been making for at least the last three webinars any Daniel code signal is automatically followed by the reversal without me uh, telling you usually I'll try and put them in I don't get to put them all in otherwise we just have uh, you know pages and pages of signals we have enough already uh, but if this is a trending market, which was not apparent, but it's now apparent, um, then what will happen after a one to three bar correction, uh, the market will resume its trend. And that's exactly what happens here. Uh, and this thing goes roaring off um, and you get a nice uh, $535 uh, trade out of it. Um, our next uh, chart, and it should have changed for you now, is headed learning to love outside bars now. Uh, <coughs> a lot of uh, people are very um, frightened of outside bars, um, upset about them, uh, but they are reality of trading and you do have to know how to handle them. Um, and I want to show you here a sequence um, in the S&P uh, which starts off here with a blue line buy uh, that fails uh, and it fails because it creates an outside bar. Um, and when you have a valid signal that fails by turning into an outside bar, you must take the stop and reverse. So the moment this uh, bar here, the outside bar, uh, took out the low of the previous bar, you then had an outside bar and you had to be short at that stage. Uh, most of the time, uh, you'll find that this strategy recovers you a good percentage of your money. In this case, uh, it did not. Uh, you had your outside bar. Uh, then the very next day uh, the market dived down uh, and we have in fact it made another outside bar but at the time that it took out this high here uh, you had a failed Daniel code signal which means there was an automatic buy uh, because this market's running down here's the rule there's a Daniel code signal one to three days this was in fact the next day if you sold that bar you were net short at the end of the day you had to buy the high if it got there the next day, which it did. Um, and it went running up for three days um, and uh, we then had a TO3 sell signal here. Uh, same thing, uh, made a higher high, down it went at the moment, this was a sell signal, um, you got short uh, below the low of this bar uh, and then it ran all the way back up and you were saying, oh hell, um, this doesn't look very good, in fact it looked horrible. But uh, the next day, because there was a failed the TO3 sell signal, the definition of failure would be if the next bar or any other bar took out the high, which it did the very next day, that's an automatic buy and you had to be long. Uh, and this market then ran up, there's uh, uh, Thursday's close on these charts, uh, so you made, you lost money on this trade, you made 900 on this trade uh, with the uh, new, the auto entry here. Um, you made $1,700. So um, you made $1,700 on one part of the trade, $900 on the other, and this is your loss on the stop and revert. It's $150. That's all it was. Uh, so the net trading from this pattern up here, uh, you made around $2,500. Now, if you didn't know or you weren't prepared to take these rules and follow them through, this is tradecraft, then you lost $150 on that trade. Uh, you probably said a bad word and got stopped out um, and uh, that was foolish because markets do this all the time. Uh, they get rid of most of the traders by doing something unexpected or unprofitable, uh, but they will give it back to you if you stick with your trade craft. Markets will continue to reward you. Vital chart really to look at with this, so have a good look. If you stick with it, uh, you follow the rules. Uh, the market will give you back uh, whatever you lost and a whole lot more as well. So that's the difference um, between knowing these trade craft rules uh, and having the tenacity to stick with them. Um, here's a, uh, another one I wanted to highlight to you. This is gold. Um, right up at the high here, we got the uh, plus buy signal in gold. It elected the trade. Now, if you were following the... Um, 
uh, the, the newbies rules, uh, it certainly got to the first target, you moved your stock to break even and you got stopped out at break even, no profit. Uh, if you had more than one contract, you made a small profit. Uh, but there was the plus buy signal, which means that tomorrow, if that low is taken out where the cursor is now, it's an automatic sell signal without me telling you any more. Uh, and uh, if you sell there, uh, you had this lovely big run down here uh, and you made 3,220 on that trade if you just trailed your stop and have a look at it. It wasn't hard, folks. Uh, there's no real attempted rally through there. Uh, this bar in which you got elected came back an awful long way. Inside bar, small down bar, small down bar, um, and then capitulation dives down to the Daniel Code blue line, 1273.70. Uh, very nice. So there was that trade, 3,220 per one contract. Uh, you can just, uh, if, you, if, you, if you get to grips with these plus signals um, and go through these webinars where I talk about them all the time, or if you don't understand them, email me and I'll put it in the next webinar and go over it all again. Uh, my interest is identical to yours. The more profitably you are trading, uh, the more likely you are to stay with me as a client, uh, which is why I do these webinars. There is so much more money available to you uh, by learning these trading rules, learning these trade craft, um, and a whole lot of it comes out of the uh, plus signals. Uh, if you weren't getting the plus signals, you didn't know uh, that this was a Daniel Code plus buy, so you didn't know uh, to sell it at the low and look at it, 3,220. Um, the other point I want to make to you is this issue of contrarian signals. This is a really hot one. Uh, a lot of our guys who've been to tutorials know about this. Um, and what happens at the time you get uh, the TO3 signals in particular? <coughs> They are time signals. They're, they're, they're time signals that are working on a, um, a micro uh, time count, if you like. Um, and it means that price and time have reached a place <coughs> where we expect the market to turn based on past performance uh, over years and years and years. If it doesn't turn, it means that a new force has come into the market. Uh, the TO3 signals assume that markets are in equilibrium. You, know, you don't need to be worried about this technical stuff. Uh, I'm just trying to explain to you how this contrarian trade works. Uh, so we would have expected, here was a TO3 buy signal here. Uh, it wasn't elected, but we would have expected the market to rally at this stage uh, because it's had a Daniel Code number, it's over, so all those things that set up, and it's also a minor TO3 time signal. So we had a TO3 buy that was not elected, <clears throat> but all of the, if the market had been in equilibrium, it would have turned uh, on this day here. Uh, and what that means is if it's not elected, if it doesn't get elected, it means that a new force has come into the market to propel the market along in its original direction. And that usually gives us a better than average trade. Uh, so when you have a TO3 signal, or a plus signal you put on your buy side order. You have to put your stop on anyway, so you might, might well it becomes a sell order. Put on your buy and your sell and let the market choose which one it wants to elect. Um, and when you get a non-elected trade, you very often get this big blast um, that really propels the market down. And that contrarian signal just on its own uh, made 1,140. Uh, so <coughs> It's vital that if you can get to understand what you can get out of this, you can uh, put a naught or maybe even a couple of noughts on the end of your trading. Uh, and this is using the Daniel Code to its full, uh, which the vast majority of you um, are not doing. Here's another one. Uh, this is a currency. This is Aussie JPY. Uh, and this one is headed turning losers into winners. Um, and you can see here the same thing. Uh, this market ran on down. Uh, we had a plus buy signal here, which was would have been a blue line signal if this market had closed below its open. But again, the turn's already in there on the open close basis. So that creates a plus buy signal here the next day. Um, and you get an inside bar. You're elected. You're long. Uh, then you get this blast off. 
Uh, same thing, look at this fast stochastic. This is the Daniel Code stochastic. You get this from the Daniel Code library. <coughs> it's at Trade Navigator. It's free to all Daniel Code members. Uh, you keep looking at this fast stochastic, which rules your, your, your uh, trailing stop, um, and the market goes up and up and up. On this bar here, uh, you got a plus sell signal. The sell was elected, uh, and it ran back up and closed well in the red. Okay, now, if you just do nothing else but sit there waiting, you're going to get stopped out the next day. Uh, but then, of course, the next day, here we are. This is your auto trade buy. I've got or two in here. Obviously, didn't check my spelling well enough. Uh, but you had a Daniel Code signal plus signal or TO3 or blue line. Doesn't matter. Any Daniel Code signal that is elected, automatically you are required to buy the high um, the next day. You count three bars. Um, not including inside bars, and that is because if this market is trending, it will only correct one to three days. So here's one day down, buy the high, and it makes you a handsome $870 uh, on the way up. The value that you lost in here with this outside bar, which upsets everyone, was about $250, $270. Um, so on these trades, if you follow this Daniel Code Tradecraft, you made $1,160 and you turned this failure here uh, into a profitable trade. Okay, now I thought this is all running too fast for you and you're not following it. Let me tell you, this is going to—it is being recorded um, and uh, it'll be posted um, in. Uh, hopefully on the weekend, perhaps not, Terry's got his new baby there, I don't know if he'll be able to get it posted, we'll certainly try and get it posted for you. Uh, here's our next chart, this is another Forex chart, <coughs> um, and it's just showing you what you're missing uh, by not following the plus signals, they are very prolific, there are lots and lots of them, uh, and they are hugely profitable if you know the trade craft to trade them. Uh, this is a really simple one. It's a straight standard plus sell signal. Uh, down it goes, <coughs> another bar down. Look where your stochastic is. You're now in oversold territory, so you go to a one bar stop. Uh, that is above the high of the last completed bar, uh, which is there. So on this day, where the indicator, where the highlighter is now, you're stopped out. $772. Uh, excuse me, per one contract. Um, uh, so, you know, you'll pay for a month of subscription to the plus signals in uh, a trade. Uh, it's that good, uh, particularly if you understand this trade class. Um, in fact, <coughs> do excuse me, this, this uh, next slide, which you're about to see, is a bit cheeky. Um, and I've uh, headed it hard to lose if you have the trade craft. Um, and again, we're showing you this is uh, dollar JPY. Um, this works exactly the same in futures or forex, doesn't matter which. Uh, we're showing you the same thing again because these patterns happen again and again and again. Uh, and often if this chart looks a bit familiar to you, it is because almost all these markets uh, have uh, some affinity to each other. So same thing here. Uh, there was your uh, plus buy signal. Um, and uh, this couldn't be a blue line signal because this stochastic was not oversold. Uh, so we released it as a plus buy signal. Uh, off it went. Here's your trail. Uh, by the time you got to this bar where the highlighter is, you're on a one bar stop. Uh, and in addition to that, you had a TO3 sell. There was the sell. You were stopped out at that low. You made $159. Um, this bar, if you were uh, trading uh, strictly according to the, uh, the newcomer rules, uh, it got to the first target. You moved your stop to break even. Um, and you got stopped out at break even. If you are following uh, this more advanced trade craft concept that I'm talking to you about, uh, you stayed in that trade, uh, but you knew that that was a possibly a failed Daniel Code signal, uh, so you had to buy the high the next day. Well, the next day you got an inside bar, nothing happened. You carry it forward. These inside bars are very often null or voids. Um, you carry it forward, and you're going to buy an automatic buy right here, which is the high of this outside bar. Uh, whether that uh, I put that in as a signal or not, you automatically have to do that. That's just part of your trade craft. Same thing if this market is trending, it will only correct one to three days, not counting inside bars. There's the one-day correction there. 
inside bar buy the high. If you're aggressive, you could have bought the high of the inside bar. I don't do that. I buy the high of the last bar that was not itself an inside bar, um, and off it goes. So you made um, a little $159 into this trade. Uh, you lost $369 on this outside bar failure. Uh, but if you are following these rules with your trade craft, as I said, the market will give it all back to you and more. And you made a um, thousand and ninety on the second part of this trade. Um, we're going to go to the chart shortly, folks. Um, here's our uh, free trial thing. We seem to have a lot of confusion about this. I'm going to show you. There's a there's a link on the Daniel Code website uh, headed free trial, uh, and all you have to do is click on that if you want a free trial. Uh, it will create for you your username and password, uh, and it will also enable everything on the Daniel Code for you, uh, with the um, exception of uh, Frank Zen. Um, so you can set up your own free trial anytime. <coughs> You're most welcome to do it. Uh, we don't uh, do any uh, selling or marketing uh, of these products. Uh, we simply say to you, take a free trial. If it, you like it, if it suits your style of trading, uh, then you're welcome uh, to subscribe to it, otherwise choice is yours. Uh, once you've done that, send your username, your Daniel Code username to Terry, please, at support of the Daniel Code dot com, and he will enable your library in Trade Navigator uh, to be switched on so that you'll have uh, all of these uh, Daniel Code tools, uh, including the timing tool, which I'm going to show you now. Uh, we can also arrange free trials to Trade Navigator for you. Uh, so please uh, go ahead and do that. Um, here's our compliance statement, uh, which I'm required uh, to show you, and um, I do suggest you take it all <coughs> seriously. Um, uh, the risk of uh, trading is uh, uh, can't be understated. Uh, particularly, uh, you'll find that as you get better at it, uh, the risk diminishes because as you learn your trade craft. Uh, you'll learn how to stay in these trades and make a whole lot more money. Uh, but there are risks involved in trading, uh, and uh, that's what we are trying to highlight for you there. Okay, so um, that's the end of the um, PowerPoint. Uh, so we can now uh, get on to, um, let me close that and get on to the chart. So um, I know you're all anxious to see um, all this stuff about where is the market going and what it's doing. So <coughs> let's start, if we can, with the um, <laughs> shift. Wallabies tonight in an after the siren come from behind win. Well, you know, I'm torn. Uh, the Wallabies, for those of you who don't know, is the uh, Australian uh, national rugby team, uh, who seven or eight years ago, perhaps a little longer, were a very, very good team, but they've lapsed. Uh, over the last uh, few years uh, for purely uh, statistical reasons. Uh, the main uh, uh, form of uh, um, winter sport uh, in Australia is uh, Australian rules, uh, which is much loved by people who live in the deep south here, which is equivalent to your far north, I guess. Um, and uh, it's the number one uh, game in Australia. Um, uh, followed by a thing called Rugby League, which is a um, uh, horrible game. Um, it's a bastard offshoot from the proper game, Rugby Union, um, and uh, but it appeals to uh, the western suburbs like, greatly. Um, and they have a huge dominance in uh, the numbers of uh, kids playing it, which is your future uh, rugby or future football players. <coughs> so um, AFL, uh, that's Aussie rules, is played in... Uh, all schools in uh, Victoria and uh, South Australia and West Australia. Uh, rugby league uh, is played in the state schools. Uh, they're the public schools, uh, which is the opposite for you people in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, uh, they're, they're public means private, private means public in this part of the world, but they're the state, the state-run and state-funded schools uh, where rugby league is played for some reason unknown to me. Um, and Rugby Union, the game they play in heaven, the gentleman's game, which uh, Shift and I played for many, many years, uh, to our dismay, I was still playing uh, grade rugby. I was sipping down the grades, I can assure you, at, uh, at 33 or 34 and uh, being dumped on the head too often on a rugby field. And, uh, you know, that's what, probably why I have a lot of arthritis now with uh, broken fingers and cracked cheekbones, all the good stuff. Uh, but anyway, uh, Rugby Union is only played in private schools 
um, in two states, Queensland and uh, New South Wales. So there are in fact uh, only 78,000 registered rugby players in Australia. This is rugby union I'm talking about. Compare that tiny little country like uh, New Zealand that only has a population of 4 million people. There are 800,000 uh, people registered as rugby players. It's the national religion. Um, and you compare that to a big country like South Africa where they have literally millions uh, of people uh, registered. Um, and of course the um, uh, up and coming popular sport uh, is this uh, thing called soccer, um, which I know is uh, much loved in uh, Europe and the UK. Um, really no basis in this country until uh, perhaps 10 or 11 years ago, but it was uh, brought in here by the migrants and uh, uh, heavily, heavily promoted. Um, and a lot of the mums like their kids to play soccer. They think uh, rugby's too rough. Um, so uh, we can blame the uh, the mums for the, the soccer push. But uh, that's the reason why uh, rugby doesn't do as well uh, in Australia. It simply um, doesn't have the input following. So shift. Um, I'm torn, my friend, as you know. I'm uh, um, a dyed-in-the-wool rugby man and um, uh, played rugby um, at school here and university and after that for many years. But... I've had the last 11 or 12 years living most of the time in New Zealand um, and during that time I've uh, come to be an All Black supporter, so which All Blacks is the New Zealand uh, rugby team folks. Any of you who uh, uh, don't know anything about rugby, uh, switch on, uh, we'll try and find the uh, game tonight, it's the second leg of the Bledisloe Cup named after a, a previous governor of New Zealand. Uh, and it's a, uh, a battle to the death uh, between Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and as long as it doesn't rain in New Zealand, we get a fast track. It should be a good game shift. Uh, so I'll certainly be watching that, my friend, and uh, uh, I'll give you a cheerio because that's a really uh, gin and tonic time uh, for me. And uh, for you, of course, uh, shift has a couple of uh, mighty hounds, uh, fearsome creatures called uh, gin and tonic. All right, then we regress. Let us move on. Uh, we're now looking at a daily chart um, of the S&P. Uh, this is the uh, E-mini contract, uh, and I've shown this to you before. We looked at this last week uh, and the week before, um, and this is the daily chart. Uh, and uh, what you're seeing here, these red lines are fourth and fifth seal lines, uh, which is our, for our forecasting tool. Um, they're not, I have to tell you, really designed to work on daily charts. Uh, they're designed to work on a longer term trading charts, um, 6, 12, 24 days. Um, and uh, <laughs> Craig, he's, Craig, he's a bloke lives in Sydney, he's a newish member shift, he says you're dreaming. <coughs> he must be a Kiwi as well, I think. We'll come to these, we'll come to these Daryls on the, good, okay. Um, we'll get to all of those uh, questions and comments, we love that. Uh, but um, uh, I use these on the daily charts as well, as you can see they're quite extraordinary. Um, and they provide support and resistance uh, to markets uh, when used on the daily time frames uh, and they're pretty uncanny. You can see we went through this uh, previously. Uh, we got a, um, a 44 cycle here. This is the cycle for gold incidentally. Gold is uh, all these uh, cycles, nearly all of them work on all the charts but 44 is the number for gold. Gold is, is dominated uh, by the 44 cycle whereas uh, this market, the S&P, is dominated uh, by the 59 and the 62 cycle. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you how easy it is to create these cycles. We've been using these triple tops here, these blue lines are where we've started the count from. There's one, there's one, um, and uh, we've used this one as well, but it gets covered by the uh, 44. Um, so here was our 59 high, the latest one up here, um, and down the market came. We had a 62. 62 is our support cycle that gives us lows. Uh, this bar was not a uh, not at the low. It was just it hadn't made its own low, uh, so we didn't expect that to bite. Um, and then we had a 70 cycle. 70 is the heathen cycle, um, so called because it comes from a different part uh, of the Book of Daniel, um, and we don't expect to see that working on equities. That's uh, pretty specific to the euro. Uh, those of you who trade the euro, it's uh, interesting. Uh, uh, but in here, there we had um, another 59 cycle uh, at a little high, drove the market down, uh, and here's our 62 cycle. I'll just spread this out, um, and you can see that there's the 62. That's our support cycle. Uh, we expect the market to find support there. Well, it hadn't quite got to the red line, had it uh, the fourth seal. So it dived down, hit the fourth seal, um, 
huge snapback reversal uh, and off it went. Uh, and it's been running up here all that time. Uh, there's the 70s, which we don't really expect to work on this market, but never say never. Um, and today we got a little uh, inside bar on the gold 44 cycle. Uh, but the important part is look what happened. There were no fourth or fifth seal lines in here, so the market had a straight shot, ran all the way up until it hit this fourth seal line uh, where it's now found resistance. Um, and it's either going to turn or it's going to consolidate. Uh, and we'll find that out next week. But um, let me show you how uh, simple it is to create these um, uh, these lines. You simply um, let's get rid of this. Uh, uh, you use this tool down here. This little uh, guy is a hedgehog uh, called Dan. This is our Daniel Code uh, motto. Um, and we have one here that looks like Dan's behind bars. Um, and you click on that. You get this with your um, Trade Navigator library for Daniel Code. Uh, and you click on uh, that high, uh, any high or any low that's more than one standard deviation from the mean. Uh, and you can see that it's created all of those signals. Perhaps you can't. Um, I'll see if I can get rid of these so I can actually show you uh, how this works because it's pretty fabulous. Um, but the page has got a bit uh, congested now. Um, let's get rid of some of this stuff so you can see it. Uh, and I'll put it on for you again. Uh, bear with me while I clear this off. Okay, uh, these new ones haven't uh, occurred yet. Uh, they're coming. Uh, and what you do is you take this tool here, this Daniel Code tool, uh, and you simply uh, click on uh, any high or low uh, that's beyond one standard deviation from the mean. Um, and you can see that here's an interesting one. Uh, you can see that it creates the time cycles straight away. There's your 44. Uh, let's go back a bit further and um, get this one to jump up uh, and then you could uh, put this on uh, at this high. You just simply click on the tool um, and there you are. There's your 62 low that caused the turn uh, and off the market ran. Um, so, you know, get these Daniel Code tools. They're, they're, they're very, very good. Um, so that was that. Uh, we have to move along, folks. Um, we're going to run out of time. Let's go and find what's happened uh, with our cocked hat. Uh, and we have a, a question about this from, um, um, let me see, uh, Brian Sullivan. This is one of your questions, Brian. Um, uh, two parts to Brian's question. Let's deal with this one first about what's happening with the S&P. Well, there was our cocked hat turn. This is, remember, we need to look at various different time frames to get an understanding of that. Uh, there was our, uh, our cocked hat turn, uh, and all we got so far uh, was a correction, uh, and a very shallow correction of that. This is uh, the index. Uh, we can also go and look at the uh, uh, WP. That's the uh, futures contract for the big S&P as opposed to the ES, which is the mini. Uh, and you can see that all we got here uh, was a uh, correction. Um, very shallow. Uh, the market has now taken out the old highs, uh, but this uh, uh, closes on uh, this, this particular bar will be complete on August the 26th, um, and a close above the uh, old high will negate that. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, this was the where we had our 59 before. We have another 59 cycle here. Um, our rules say it shall be for time times and and half. Well, there was the 59 time, uh, there's the and and half, uh, and this is times. In other words, two iterations, which means rotations, uh, of the 59 cycle. So we have another 59 cycle uh, sitting right here today. Um, and the reason for that is if you go back to this point here where you can see the cursor now, um, there uh, are two uh, places you can start this count from. Uh, this count, uh, I think I'm at the right place, I hope I am, uh, is from this high, um, and it actually comes here. Uh, the previous count was from that low. So we now have uh, another 59 cycle valid uh, for the six-day period until August the 26th. Uh, so yes, you're still in a chance with this thing of turning down. 
Let's look at our other chart to see if we can understand more of what's happening. Uh, this is our 12-day chart, um, and you can see these red lines. These are the intersections of the fourth and fifth seal lines that gave rise uh, to the article the cocked hat. Uh, this is the cocked hat, the navigation lines where they all intersect. Um, and even though we've had a pullback, you can see that the market hasn't gone up um, and breached these lines again. So uh, technically, it's still in a position from which uh, a far bigger correction could occur. Uh, let's also look at our 24-day chart, uh, which is what I used uh, to write that article. Um, and you can see here, pretty interesting, here was your cocked hat, uh, your next bar broke above it. Let me expand this for you a bit, make it a bit clearer. Uh, the next bar broke above it um, uh, and then reversed when it found the number. We had that correction and have a look. This is where it's gone this week. It's still following this fourth seal line. Um, it, it's locked onto it um, and uh, there's your high right at the fourth seal line. So. Um, the probabilities of reversal um, are still there. Um, if we're going to get a reversal, uh, Sage's question was uh, this question of days, um, and I said to you last week, um, what markets typically do, this market, we're talking about the S&P, um, is on Monday, <coughs> Sage, it follows uh, whatever direction it's been going in. Uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are typically up days. Thursday is the day where you will most likely get a reversal if you're going to get a reversal. Um, and uh, Friday is nearly always an up or solid day um, as the boys try to leave the market in good shape um, so they can enjoy their weekend, uh, assuming that almost all the world is long. Uh, so Thursday is the most highly probable day uh, to get a reversal if you're going to get it. Okay. Uh, let me move on. I've dealt with those things. Let me get on to uh, these questions. This is from uh, Brian Sullivan. Um, and Brian, you're talking about this question of uh, because markets are so highly correlated, uh, you, you get this between gold, silver and Huey, uh, and you also get it between the uh, equities, uh, Russell, Dow, S&P, NASDAQ and the DAX are usually, I say usually, so highly correlated um, that a signal in one can be executed in any other. Um, so uh, you talk there about, uh, you say if there's a signal, let us say, uh, in the uh, Dow um, and you want to execute that in the S&P, let's say it's a sell signal, um, you can execute that in the S&P or the NASDAQ or the Russell or the DAX if the signal is elected, that is if the low of the setup bar um, is elected. Now, to clarify what you're talking about, once you're in the trade, you trade that market. Once you're elected, you're in that market. You don't have to worry about what the other markets are doing. Uh, so you don't have to worry if uh, uh, the Dow uh, goes back and makes an outside bar. You're in the S&P trade. Uh, you stick with it. So. Um, that's the answer to that, and I hope that that's, um, uh, that's uh, an answer for you, uh, Brian. Um, we do have this situation uh, that the uh, S&P, NASDAQ um, uh, are out of sync with the other markets. Uh, the Russell uh, is much weaker. The NASDAQ was the stronger market. Uh, the Dow's now uh, starting to catch it up, uh, but we're not getting the sort of correlations that we used to. That is. Typically, all of these markets will make new highs together or new lows together. Uh, and these markets have been out of sync now for some months. Um, and that is a, uh, that is a uh, warning that these markets are not as well organized as they usually are. Um, and that fits into a level of instability, which would be cured by a decent correction. If we go back and look at our, uh, our six-day uh, six uh, chart here, um, you can see uh, this is the big S&P. Uh, there hasn't been a decent correction in this market um, since uh, way back uh, in February, that, and, and that's not much for correction anyway. It only got to one standard deviation below the mean. Um, this little correction we've just had, very shallow. This market needs to correct, um, and don't go panicking about um, a crash or anything else. Uh, it's just a normal correction. Markets that correct are healthy markets. Uh, markets that do this sort of thing, up, 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 all one-way traffic, uh, become vulnerable. 
um, and uh, the difference between uh, all of these equity markets in different stages uh, shows you that there's some um, lack of organization uh, in the market. So that was your question, Brian. The other question was from um, uh, Brian Coleman. Um, uh, and uh, Brian asks, um, yeah, this is interesting. Uh, Brian's saying, uh, I have a solid method I've used for many years. It's worked fine. Um, and uh, he's asking about um, uh, using the uh, blue line signals. Um, and he says, an obvious issue would be price discrepancies among disparate trading programs, uh, platforms. He trades uh, uh, Forex, I guess. I just can't see this. Uh, I, I did read it, Brian. I've got some other um, Citrix, you know, um, go to webinar stuff open over the top. But uh, basically what you're saying is you're worried about different price levels. Well, um, you only get different price levels in Forex, not in futures. All the futures price levels will be the same. Uh, in Forex, you get different price levels because they're different platforms. There's no central exchange. But uh, there's no there's no significant difference uh, in the price recognition of those platforms. Uh, we've tried a few of them, um, and uh, they all uh, pretty much will hang on the Daniel Code numbers. They might uh, the Daniel Code price recognition is valid at a bar high low or at the close, so they'll get it one way or the other. Um, and then uh, you ask, uh, is there a synergy amongst the retracements and extension levels uh, that cumulatively result in the situation? Um, uh, where it makes the, 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 the signal stronger. No, they don't. Uh, what makes markets turn at the blue lines, uh, to give you the simple version, uh, is those uh, four points I gave you before. Price recognition, slow stochastic overbought, fast stochastic overbought, and divergence on the uh, our proprietary momentum indicator. Um, the uh, red line turns just work faster than that. Um, and um, as you say, you trade the S&P and currency futures, uh, use open source indicators, try to avoid all proprietary systems. Uh, I don't want the meter running on any core components. Well, uh, nor do I, mate. I mean, I always try to avoid unnecessary cost. And simply, I guess, it's a question if you decide uh, whether subscribing to the Daniel Code to get the numbers uh, and the signals is worth it. Does it increase your return or not? Uh, we do do charts. We publish charts for uh, 20 markets. Uh, nine futures and 11, 11 futures rather, and nine um, uh, currency markets, but I give you all those signals in the TO3 Plus uh, program. So it's just um, a question of um, whether you find that worthwhile, but don't uh, use the blue lines on an ad hoc basis. That is, don't say there's a blue line, I'm going to put my sell order in on limit. That does not work. People lose a lot of money doing that. You need to have the complete setup. Uh, and the trade then needs to be elected, which is vital. Okay, folks, we've got an hour and five minutes. Um, let me look at your questions and uh, uh, see what we've got here um, that I can answer. Um, yes, Haley, I hope you get some rain in California. It's horrible there. Uh, we've done all those. We've talked about that. Um, uh, Neil, uh, approximate stop loss for the HG plus trade. I don't know without looking at it, mate. Shoot me an email, Neil, and I'll address that. Uh, <laughs> Hank, do you think Terry knows what causes it? Uh, he's going to learn pretty damn soon. He's going to have three sons under the age of four. Um, his wife works. She's a, uh, a speech therapist, works at the local hospital, so Terry does an awful lot of the babysitting. Um, and... Uh, uh, if he hasn't got a headache now, he will have uh, pretty soon. Uh, uh, Albert, in this case, a stop and reverse. I don't know what you mean there. Um, uh, Smed, shift, wallabies tonight. Yes, mate, good luck to you. Uh, I don't think so. I think uh, if it's a dry track, I think the All Blacks will uh, show some magic. I do notice, incidentally, mate, you'll see this. The props, the, the Franks brothers, I've got the great respect for anyone who plays prop. I was a back, of course. Uh, but, uh, gee, they were slow getting off the ground uh, in Sydney and uh, uh, getting in the way of the back line. Uh, they need a whole lot more energy tonight. Uh, Ted, will you be getting into where the buy-sell signals come from? Yeah, absolutely, Ted. Um, 
not quite sure which ones you're talking about. If you're talking about the TO3 and plus signals, um, I create those personally. Um, they come out of uh, my head and uh, the programs we run uh, behind the chart. If you're talking about uh, Frank Zen, uh, they're created by a server uh, program by Trade Navigator <coughs> based on the rules uh, that uh, I have given them. Um, Stan, does this work on stocks? Uh, mate, it does. It works on big stocks. Um, uh, a lot of US stocks are, uh, really have a controlling shareholder. Uh, if there's not a wide spread of shareholders, um, it doesn't because the markets are manipulated so often. Uh, but uh, on the big uh, on the big markets uh, with a wide spread of shareholders, it works perfectly. Um, Sage, she's rooting for the All Blacks, uh, as you would expect. Uh, shift, um, go the All Blacks. Uh, losers shout at the Waiheke tutorial. Uh, quite right. Incidentally, don't forget, folks, that we're going to have another tutorial at Waiheke in December. Uh, last year's were just so good. We just uh, got to do it. They do it again. Uh, Steve Hansen apparently been putting his nails down to the quick today. That's Rob. That's Rob Henderson, uh, who's my mate from New Zealand. He's a very interesting guy. Uh, yeah, Craig Ayres thinks you're dreaming, mate. Uh, uh, AB will turn the ball at the 62 and a half percent field mark for conversion. Angle said, "Good on you, Rob. Um, that's great. I hope you're well, mate." Um, okay, what else have we got? Uh, Brian Carr, he's happy with the answer. Uh, Rod, uh, since you use a six-day per, you have to specify where count starts. What is that date? Uh, any significant high or low uh, on your chart, uh, Rod, Rodney, um, and that uh, by definition means a high or low that is more than one standard deviation from the mean. Um, if you run the uh, Daniel Code uh, trading channels, uh, which I've talked about in previous webinars. In fact, there's a webinar uh, headed DC Trading Channels. Have a look at that under the Videos tab um, on the Daniel Code website, um, and you'll see um, how to do that. Um, Stephen, is the current 44 cycle uh, a negative for gold? Well, it's not on the gold chart. Uh, it's on the S&P chart. It's just one of many probably caused a bit of a consolidation here, Stephen. I haven't um, showed you the gold chart, but I should. Uh, really, really good point. Let me uh, uh, get that for you. Uh, we don't really have enough time with all this. This is what you want to see here, mate. Um, this is the uh, six-day chart on gold. Um, and uh, let me push this out so we can uh, see a bit what's happening. Um, uh, I showed this to you last week, and I said at this point here, uh, this market would turn and uh, go down, which it did. Um, and it's now run into it found support um, at this uh, Daniel Code fourth seal line right here. In fact, it's closed right on it. Uh, if it breaks there, um, I'll update this chart to see if there's anything in between. But at the moment, uh, it hasn't, and it looks like if it breaks there, it goes down to about 1186, which is going to give some of you the horrors. Um, for those of you who can say, I know we're over time, folks, but uh, I want to take you and show you the fourth seal uh, stuff on this so you can get a better picture. Um, uh, auto trade uh, Frank Zen uh, for Hank. This will be the, uh, will it be available through Jerry? Um, yes, uh, Hank, it will. I'm not sure whether you're talking about the leader follower uh, or the new Frank Zen Pro, which will run inside Trade Navigator, uh, but all of our programs are available through Jerry. He's uh, our main supporting uh, broker here. Uh, and uh, anything we have, Jerry will have. Okay, that's the end of the questions, folks. So let me now very quickly uh, let's have a quick look at what the um, let's have a quick look at what the um, fourth seal has to say about things. Uh, this is uh, uh, last week. Here's our um, here's our uh, website, folks. That's uh, got a bit large. Uh, let's bring it back now. This is the banner I wanted to show you. See, this is. Uh, hasn't quite caught up with you yet. Let's see if it can. Um, this chart has not uh, changed. Has now. You can see it. Up here, this is our landing page, the Daniel Code free trial. If you want a free trial, just click on it, follow the prompts, and you'll get switched on for everything. Uh, but now uh, let's have a really quick look uh, at what the Ford Seal has to say about uh, the S&P. Um, and here it is. 
that page, I think you can see it coming up shortly. Here it is, here's the uh, two charts, you can see uh, this will be the uh, six day chart, it's running up into a 44 cycle, look how beautifully it turned uh, at the 50% retracement and the 62, I told you that's the supporting cycle, that's just uh, beautiful stuff. Um, and this is uh, what we have to say uh, about this, we're under the influence of a 44 cycle top, um, cycle runs till Thursday, key to whether the larger correction is over or not. Any rally past Thursday suggests we had the low on the 62 and we will see all new uh, all-time highs next week. Um, uh, this uh, is updated every Monday, uh, folks, um, and you can subscribe to this. Uh, let's see what um, he has to say about um, gold. I know it's of great interest to many of you uh, folks. Um, here's gold's chart, uh, and basically what he's saying is that these uh, price levels are so congested um, you can read it here, been frustrating, corrective cycles tend to go more sideways than down um, and uh, Frank who helps me with the preparation of these uh, four steel charts is a gold bull, um, I'm not to me, it's just another trading market. Uh, the other one I wanted to show you I thought was interesting was uh, copper. Uh, so those of you who don't follow the fourth seal and not subscribed to it, you should be. Uh, because have a look at what uh, our site here, these are our charts, uh, here was our 59 on copper, this was posted last Monday uh, before the move began, um, it's going to look like this is going to give us the closing low, uh, it's the momentum low of this move, we should have a low in place and at least a relief rally, maybe even some strong action, the bias from now on is up again and we'll evaluate further, so uh, this has been on the um, uh, four seal charts for weeks and weeks um, and uh, you could have uh, anticipated uh, where this market was going to turn. Uh, more importantly by following the trend uh, on the four seal charts you will double your return uh, if you load your uh, trades a little bit in the direction of the four seal trend. Uh, I've talked about that before, any of you want to know more uh, please show, send me an uh, email um, and I'll make sure I get it into the next webinar. Well guys, uh, I regret to say I've gone 15 minutes over time um, and it doesn't trouble me, I'll stay here and talk to you all day if I could but uh, uh, it's Friday night there and I know you all have um, uh, other commitments there so uh, uh, good on you Ted, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, uh, yeah, Rod, pick up stick or cat's cradle. Um, well, you know, these charts, I use them for my own trading of course and um, they get built up a little bit and I understand them because I've seen the, the progression as they're built up but they do become a bit of a, uh, bit, a bit of a nightmare if you, you know, haven't got used to them. Anyway, that's it folks. Thanks very much for your attendance. Um, we'll have another webinar next week. Uh, please uh, shoot me an email about any particular um, uh, questions you'd like me to deal with uh, and I thank you uh, very much uh, for your attendance uh, and hope you have a wonderful weekend. All right, thanks guys, bye bye.